great ho, ho, ho. evening, <laughs> ho, ho, ho. and a Merry Christmas, and welcome to Word the True, and I am your host for this magical evening. As you can see, we have all kinds of magic happening behind me with my Northern Lights. I am Tawny. I am joined today by Chris Lynn, and I'm also joined by Dawn, and of course, the fearless and fabulous Astrid, who Yay. is um, the, one of the founding mothers of this podcast slash platform. So welcome to everyone who is watching us live. Welcome to those of you who are watching this later on recorded. I'm so glad that you're here with us tonight. We have our Christmas colors on, our green and our red. Oh, my red's not showing. Celebrating. Yeah, you got to show yours a little bit better. Yeah, you got to move up. Put it down, put it down. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, so we're definitely excited about um, celebrating Christmas and putting the Christ in Christmas. So, but we're going to continue on with um theme on love and relationships so tonight our topic is are you guys ready for this are you guys ready for this you my co-host are you ready for this because this is crazy okay yes we are ready <laughs> this week's <laughs> topic is does age race culture and distance matter in a relationship o m g Yes. So I'm going to start this off and say, heck yeah. <laughs> it really does. It does matter. It does matter, not necessarily in a good way or a bad way, but it definitely impacts the relationship. Now, I feel that I am very much well-versed to speak about this because not only have I been in relationships where there's been an age difference, I've been in relationships where there's been a cultural difference. I've been in relationships where there's been a locational difference. <laughs> so I am, have a lot of stories that I can share. So, hmm, where should I begin? Uh, Let's see. I'm going to say, I'm going to talk about the age difference first. Because that one was a very short, uh, that was a very short interaction. <laughs> it was a very short interaction. And I don't know if it had anything to do with the age. But... Um, I'm not going to say my age, but I'm going to say that this individual was approximately at the time, he was probably a good 13, 14 years older than me. And I was like, this is nah, you know, I'm not into the whole like daddy thing. <laughs> like, I just kind of felt like you just, you just, oh, but he was so sweet to me. We just had this really great friendship. And then it just kind of and I don't know, like, I just was like, after like a few minutes, like, I was like, okay, like, I just feel like his age doesn't really, doesn't really matter because he just had such a nurturing, loving, kind way. And I was like, you know what? He just treats me really, really nice. I just like, you know, the way that he treated me. But he was also a location person too, because he did live in another state. So not only was he older than me, but he lived in another state that was not convenient for me to get to him and spend time and hang out. So, you know, I mean, needless to say, we're no longer an item, but that was, that was a, that was a thing. Then I had a two year relationship with someone who lived in another state as well. So that whole lo location thing, I don't know what's wrong with me why I'm always trying to date people that don't live in New York, but this <laughs> guy all the way, all the way in Texas. Oh my gosh. Wow. So, needless to say, in those two years that we dated, I saw him three times. <laughs> That's not enough. That wasn't enough. So that was a situation too that did not really work for me. So um, culture now, I'm gonna, I can say that one for last because that one was actually my marriage. And my ex-husband um, was from Nigeria, Africa. And we were engaged for about a year and a half before we got married. And we were married for another year and a half to two years before we got divorced, separated and divorced. And his, um, I actually really fell in love with his culture, actually. So I don't necessarily think that the culture was a problem, um, but the religion was. 
and we talked about this on a previous podcast. Yes. Oh, so about like how, you know, and Dawn was very adamant about that. <laughs> Dawn was mm-hmm. and, and Asher were like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, Dawn and I were kind of like, kind of seeing eye to eye on it. But, you know, I was, I'm non-denominational Christian. He was Jehovah's Witness. And oh my goodness, like, it was like, Holy Phil and Tyson. <laughs> it was like we just couldn't figure it out. But um, yeah, so culturally though, I, I actually loved that he was African. I loved that he was Nigerian. I loved to learn about the culture. I was learning the language. I was learning how to cook the food. I was wearing those little beautiful headdresses and and the nice little African printed clothes and and it was just, and I love their culture. I love that their, their family was great. They had such a great family. They had such a great uh, dynamic, tight, close-knit family, nice connections. It was wonderful. And so culturally, it was not necessarily a problem. And I'm the type of person where I can be open-minded to a certain degree. So I'm always interested in learning about other people's cultures and what other people do, especially when there's other languages involved, because anybody who knows me knows I love languages. And so it was it was beautiful in that regard. But I think if we were on point with the religion, we would definitely still be married today, most likely. So, you know, with that being said, I'll just put this out there for the ladies. Um, if you were to pick race, uh, culture, distance, age, which one do you feel absolutely is a, is like a no-no for a relationship? And then which one do you feel like, eh, it just so does not matter. So let's start, let's start with Chris. <laughs> I want to start with my girl, Chris, because ah, I'm just so happy to see you. And I'm so glad you're here. So let's uh-huh. you, you all have, have such poignant, thoughtful comments. <laughs> so, go. Tuppy, 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 tuppy. <clears throat> well, I think the toughest would be religion. I think it's the, I think it would be the, the, that wasn't one of the options, though. No, I'm sorry. That wasn't one of the options. It was age, oh, race, culture, and di- location or distance. Uh, well, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> location would be definitely tough. I mean, ra- um, race and location would be the toughest for me. Mm. I'm going to tell you why. Mm-hmm. So, okay, location speaks volumes in and of itself. I mean, there's a distance, you know, you don't get to see each other, you don't get to, and, and that depends on, too, whether or not you had some type of relationship prior to this individual moving to another state or you moving to another state. Had you guys been already dating? Had you gotten to know each other very well? Um, you know, that you could be comfortable enough to be in, you know, hundreds of miles away from them and do the long distance thing and yada, yada, yada. So, uh, but a new relationship, I think, would struggle with location. I think it would definitely struggle. You know, if you had an established relationship, that might survive it um, because you can, you know, you could actually work out logistics and time and all that stuff, you know, holidays and blah, 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 birthdays and whatnot into your, you know, into your um, schedule. Mm -hmm. But I mean, for me, not that I feel any particular way about a race, I don't, but I do think... Just speaking, I mean, we're going to talk, we're going to speak Dutch, <laughs> right? we going to keep it real. Or work. <laughs> As an African-American <laughs> woman, it would be hard for me to relate to other races or maybe them relating to me as an African-American. You know what I mean? Like my history, you know, where I'm, I'm embedded in that. And for another culture to interact that way, you know, in a relationship might be a little bit difficult for me. You know what I mean? Like, even though people know historically african-americans and where we came from and all that being relatable is important african-americans for me just for me this is my personal thing it ain't got nothing to do with nobody i would rather be with an african-american male Mm. because you know that's just my feeling on it i'm not saying that any other race i'm just saying it would be difficult i'm not saying that any other race would I mean, you, people could argue the fact that a man is a man and that love is colorblind and all these other handles that we we put on um, mm-hmm. 
love, <laughs> you know, love. Like, so, but you know, when you want to speak, if, I can't speak for everybody else. I can only speak for myself, mm -hmm. for me. That is just my preference. It would be hard for me to be in a relationship with another race. Have you That's ever been approached by someone from? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and you just flat turned them down. <laughs> no, I mean, it wasn't a flat turn. You were like, no, flat turn down. you got to get your own. <laughs> I mean, it's a matter of how I feel about the whole situation. I can, you know, you can date. I can date from another race, but would I marry? I don't know. Oh, so wait a minute now, because we're talking about relationships. So relationships could be dating relationships. Like yeah, I could, I could date. I could date and white. I could married. date. I so could you date would, Indian. You would date somebody exclusively, but you would not marry them. No, I don't. I don't think I would. I don't. I don't. I don't. I think. I think that race it can be just as tough as religion. So how did? Okay. So this is what begs the question for me. If you can date someone who is not of the race exclusively, can you date someone who's not of your race exclusively, meaning that's your man? Like you're only seeing him, you're only dating him. Can you do that? Yeah, so I could do that. What's the difference if you're married? But you know, I mean, because marriage is, that's a, that's a contract. That's a interlocking thing. Well, let's put, let's, let's put it out there like this. Right now, okay, I'm not having no more children. Right. Okay. So that's a done deal. Right. Right. If we were speaking to maybe the Chris that was maybe 30, 35 years old, I okay. might see things a little bit differently. But at this right. age in my life, I would say okay. I wouldn't. But 30, 35, that might have been a possibility. When you're raising children in interracial marriages, it can be very tough, just like raising children in different, you know, religions Religion. coming together. Yeah. So um, for now, I probably would not do it. Then I might have thought about it, you know, but I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to say that I would do it. I'm not going to say that I would. My mindset is framed African-American male, married, period, yada, yada, yada. That's it. That's, that's it for me. And I that's an afro behind you. Yeah. Soul <laughs> sisters representing. I see it happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have okay. nothing against any interracial marriage. More right. power to you, but my personal preference would be African American. That's just where my heart is. That's you where just my soul is. feel like you can relate. There is a connection. You have a struggle. He has a struggle. It's the same struggle. You feel like it's a black struggle. We're struggling together with the same thing. And so if you're non black, you might empathize with me, but you're not really experiencing it along with me. Is that what you're saying? Pretty much. Okay. All right. Pretty much. It's hard for you to get to the point of where. You can understand it, but relating to where my ancestors came from, to our struggle, right, to what we've been through, you right. know, um, you can't, you can't, you just, that's something that you can't really, really. Because you're like, wait yeah. a minute, your great, 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 great granddaddy owned my great, 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 great granddaddy. So. Just yeah. saying. <laughs> that's what I I'm just saying. I mean, we said we're going to be, we're going to be honest. We're going to yeah, speak yeah. the truth, <laughs> right? So this, that's my. That's my feeling on it. That's my take on it. That's how I think about it. That's how I feel about it. That's how I see it. And that's how, that, that's for Chris. I, I can't speak for the rest of the world. No, you are. You're speaking for you and that's fine. So who that's wants it. to take next? Mm -hmm. I want to go next. Go ahead. Go ahead. I want to go next. Who's the one? It's, I listen to Chrissy and my sister and I have had conversations around what you're saying in regards to race. I think it's a little bit, I think it's a little bit different for someone like myself, hmm. who is, and I, and I think maybe even you, Tony and Astrid can identify with this. Many folks for the Caribbean, I mean, I mean, I'm not saying that um, African Americans, you know, don't have some kind of like mixture, you know, along, you know, in their family, but you find it's predominantly amongst Caribbean um, folks, I feel that sometimes our mixture is a little bit more or greater than African Americans, you know, born and raised African Americans. Um, so for someone like myself, who has a German English mother and a black dad, you know what I mean? Most of my family, especially my mother's side of the family is Caucasian white. 
you know, and, um, you know, my aunts were born in Cuba. Some of them are, um, their dad was Asian, you know, so I come from a very diverse family. So I can understand where Chrissy is coming from. Because for the most, is it safe to assume, Chrissy, that most of your family, both on your mom and your dad's side, is African-American? There's not really much um, other races mm -hmm. or biracial in your family. Is that, is that safe to assume? Yeah, that's safe to assume. Yeah. Not only that, Dawn, not only that, and I'm not going to stop your flow. Not only mm -hmm. that, I came up in a real serious civil rights movement. Yes, um, yes, really exactly. Really serious, really exactly. Black Panthers. Ooh, you yeah. know, just really, I can go with, I can just tell you names, <laughs> but that was where, that's the yes. atmosphere I grew up <laughs> yes, in. Yes, so. yes, I, I sense that, Chrissy. So my sister, like I said, my sister and I, we've often had conversations that, um, the um the slave the slavery experience in the caribbean mm -hmm. is a little bit different oh, yeah. from the slavery experience in america yes. mm -hmm. it is mm -hmm. so sometimes it's a little bit um easier for us as people who are raised in the caribbean to gravitate to someone of another culture because because of a certainty, we don't really have much of like a specific identity. Like, um, like you know, Christy and, I, and my other um, African-American friends or Black American, you know, friends have almost a, more of like a direct identity when it comes to their Blackness, for lack of a better word. You understand what I'm saying? But like for me, mine is so mixed up, you know, along the lines, like I said, you know, German English mom, you know, Black dad. You know, my 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 um my my granddad on my mom's side is you know is part German. Um, grandma on my mom's side is English and something else. You know, and maroon. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. So it's sometimes it's a little, <laughs> said again. <laughs> I said donkey shame. <laughs> yeah. So like, so it's a, so it's a little cha challenging. So I find that you know our uh, I find that you know we as as um Caribbean raised or Caribbean born folks are a little bit more easier to mm -hmm. gravitate and easier yes. to get married to someone of a different race, you know? Yes. Like for yeah, like for instance, because I know without a shadow of a doubt that as as a matter of fact, both of you guys, both you ladies I should say, have family members who are married to um folks, you know, who are married to white or who are married to, you know what I mean? Yes. And, and and no problem. Yeah. So I understand where Chrissy is coming from. Can it be done? I wouldn't say no. If, you know, rule it out, it's, it's impossible for it to happen. But I would say that um, it can be a challenge because um, like Chrissy was saying, you want someone who can identify with your struggle because unfortunately the reality is, especially in the United States, is that Black Americans are still going through a lot, even yeah. in 2020. Right. Yes. No, I'm Even in 2020, gonna... I work. I work in human resources, and it's important for us, you know, to make sure that you know we have diversity when it comes to you know selecting candidates, blah 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 stuff. Like that. And I still see the challenges. I still get the phone calls from the minorities, you know, saying X Y Z blah 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 blah. So I can understand why, to a certain degree, someone like Chrissy, you know, would say that most likely, as much as she would entertain, you know, going out and you know things like that. But she really couldn't see herself marrying somebody of another race because the struggle is real. What they went through is real. What right. her mom went through is real. Oh, what yeah. her yeah, what her my you know grandma, dad went through is real. Yes. Yes. What her yes. granddad, you know, you know, you can't ignore those things. Yeah. So it can be a challenge in a relationship. As much as the person might be open, you know, and it's like, you know, really want to understand, you right. know, where yes. she's coming yeah. from and how she's feeling. Right. It can they can only understand and they can only support can only, yeah, and they can only certainly. identify but mm -hmm. so by so, so much yeah yeah but so much yeah now for me personally um I love my brothers yeah <laughs> I'm not gonna lie I do uh, out loud <laughs> yeah but but um I wouldn't say I'm gonna totally rule out I mean my preference is that but I wouldn't say I would totally right. rule out, um, you know, entertaining someone of a different race. Um, because me being multiracial or biracial, it's almost like denying that part of me. Mm. 
You know exactly. what I mean? Say like, oh, I'm just going to disregard, you know, my mom's side of the family, yeah, you know, or my granddad's side of the family, you know? Yeah. I'm just going to, I'm just going to entertain, you know, my dad's side of the family. And I don't believe, you know, honestly, honestly, honesty, I, be, I don't believe it's like, I don't think it's biblical, you know, especially as Christians for us to have, to have that kind of like mindset. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. Nothing is wrong with you having your preference. Yes. But to yes. say that you're not going to entertain a relationship with someone is because of their race and their culture and all that stuff is wrong because, you know, we are not, God is, you know, didn't save us and, you know, and make us born again, you know, to have that kind of like mindset because in his eyes, he sees us all as one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like I will, I will repeat, mm -hmm. nothing wrong with you having your preferences, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but make sure that your preference is not based on biasness. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. 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 Everybody has yeah. preferences about what yeah. kind of thing they yes. want. Whether it's a, 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 of a certain nationality, a certain ethnicity. Some people don't want a tall man. Some don't want a short man. Some want one that maybe have a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Some want that. People <laughs> have a purpose for what they want, you know? Mm -hmm. And if you say to yourself, I can entertain any race, that's fine too. That's your choice. We can entertain any race. If nobody can, you know, you, when you become biased and say just because you're white or just because you're German right. or just because you're Russian, I'm mm -hmm. not dating you. So when Tony asked me, would I entertain a different race? I said, yes, I would. I would date. I would entertain. But when it comes to marriage, that's a different story. My preference. Yes. My choice Your preference. Yes. yes. Because I have a history of whites in my family too, as most African-Americans. And I have people in my family that right now are currently married to people outside of the African-American race. That's their choice. Mm -hmm. That's what they wanted. That's, you know, mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's cool. That's, a, and I have no area with it whatsoever, but you know, in terms of w what would be the most difficult for me, that would be the most difficult thing for me to see myself in married to, or not, not necessarily married because uh, that wasn't the question, but, um, it, it, it can be difficult for me. It can be difficult. No, that was the question. Yeah, for me. That was the yeah. question. Relationships okay, so there you go. was both. So it was for it, me. Any type that was of part of the question. It yeah, so for me, <laughs> culture uh, culture is not a problem because I, I, I did marry, I did get married to somebody who was from a complete different culture than mine. Yes. Hispanic yes, culture. Right. Born and raised in New York. Before I came to New York to live, I've never even visited New York. Mm -hmm. Yep, I was born in England. Mommy brought us from England back to Jamaica because that's where she was born and raised. Right. And I won't get into it because she she did she she dealt with some issues living in England because she looks like a white woman, but she's not fully white. You said she was. You see that? Yeah. You see how that works? Yes. Yeah. She yeah. Does. So, so what she, she, does, she does. She does have. Clear. She does have some um, black, which of the maroon race. My great great grandmother was of the maroon race, but you wouldn't know because all of her children was born to a white Englishman, an English soldier that was stationed in Jamaica. I'm sorry. What's maroon race? Um, maroon, maroon, it, maroon is uh, African um, culture. It's a um, a group of people from Africa. Oh, really? Yes. Okay, some of them, that. yeah. Some of them was like something. Yeah, like some of them was some of them was dropped off in Jamaica. Some of them were mm -hmm. dropped off, you know, uh, in um in the Spanish, um, you know, speaking countries. You know, I'm I, I'm pretty sure wow. that some may have been dropped off, you know, in America also, you know, because you know we we were all we were dropped off. You know, our sisters were dropped off in different locations. So wait, so your mom, your mom does not consider herself white? You know, to be honest, I've never asked her that question. Mm, she never checked. The I don't, I don't think she, I don't, honestly, I don't think she does. <laughs> you, yeah, you know, you know, I don't think she does, to be honest. I don't she think she does. Be white. Yeah, because she was, um, because. Is her name um, Rachel? No, I'm joking. <laughs> yeah, she, re yeah, she refers to herself. She considered herself to be Jamaican because I remember when she came from back from England back to Jamaica and she was working at a hospital and this um you know this um Rastafarian guy was waiting in the um in the ER you know waiting area to be seen and she called him she called him in and he was like I'm going to say this in patois he said Minawana white nurse 
treat me. Go on back to your country. You know? And she took him outside and she pointed to the hospital across the street and she said, come here, mate. She said, I just want you to know right across there. She said, that's where I was born. Mm. And he was shocked, you know, yeah. to find out that she's born and raised, you know, Jamaican. So culture wise for me, let me go back, you know, mm. culture wise for me, it's not probably because, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't challenging for me to adapt to Eugene's culture or the way he was raised because like yourself, Tony, I have a fascination to learn about different <laughs> yes. cultures, you know? Right. Yeah. I, I, you know yes, there are times when I would ask Astrid, so how you guys make this in Honduras? Or, you know, and I love to listen to Astrid's, you know, back home stories, you know, mm -hmm. and things like that, you know, and I would, you know, I would sit, practically sit at Grandma Brown's feet, you know, and just listen to her stories and, you know, yeah. her talk about the way that she make, you know, different foods and things like that. Okay. You know, I would hang out with, you know, and spend time with people like Sister Jenny and Sister yeah. Susanna, you know, yeah. the Puerto Rican, um, you know, men and women, you know, in our um, at Triumphant because I love other culture. Right. I, you know, I would sit and listen to Brother Singh. Brother Singh, who used to come to Triumphant, he's from Guyana. You know, mm -hmm. Brother Guy, who I believe is yes, from, um, you know, from St. Vincent. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I just love learning about other cultures. So for me, culture wouldn't be an issue. Yeah. Culture distance be distance yeah. now. That would be a major issue for me. Which one? Me, distance. Yes. Yeah. Okay, distance. Yeah. Now, me personally, I could not see myself dating someone who lives all the way in Jamaica or all the way in Honduras or all the way in, I don't even want to date somebody in the next state, much less <laughs> you know, in another country, you know, to be honest, to me, that would be extremely challenging for me because I, because as much as I am more of an introvert and I'm not really a groupy groupy person, mm. I do like, as we can say, I do like one-on-one -on -one relationships. Yeah. I like to interact one-on-one. -on -one. You know, we go out to the museum. We go out on to dinner. I like spont... I could never say this word. Okay, educator, Tony, help me with this word. Spontaneity. Yes. Spontaneity. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Yes, I like for you to just say, hey, Spontaneity, you yes. want to go to so-and-so-and-so? -and -so? Like, yeah. uh, when? Today? I'm like, uh, okay, let me see if I'm available. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. I don't really like too much of the, um, okay, let's see. Um, Sina, you're in so-and-so-and-so. -and -so -and -so. Let's see. Maybe we're going to have to see if you can yeah, catch a you flight. Have to do blah, 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 blah. No. You far yeah, away. Yeah, that's you too have to make sure yeah. the line up. Yeah, yeah. That's too, much for, uh, that's too much for me. So personally, that would be a challenge for me. And that would almost be like a, I wouldn't say like a, deal a deal breaker. breaker. It would be like, yeah, it would be, it would be almost, yeah. I would say more like a deal breaker for yeah. me because, yeah, yeah. I want to be able to be, you know, for us to go out, you know, just like that, just you know, to interact. I, I literally was having this conversation with some, I met a gentleman um, about a week or so ago and he lives in New Jersey. He lives like an hour away. And I was just explaining, and then he's a workaholic too. So I'm like, okay, so you work in about eight days a week and then you live in another state. And, um, you know, I was saying to him, sometimes I like to do a little drive-by, <laughs> you know, like if I want to be able to like, be like, oh, you know, my schedule freed up real quick. Let me shoot by and say hello. So I'm like, I can't just shoot by an hour trip. If you, if you're 10 minutes away, if you're 15 minutes away, no trip. that's different, but you're an hour, hour and a half away. You got to worry about traffic, bridge, toll, tunnel. Mm -mm. <laughs> I just want to say something though. Go ahead. Um, okay. Let's start. I was <laughs> talking about race, age, culture, and um, location, distance. distance. Yeah, race. I don't have a problem because, like Tony um, knows and Dawn knows, our family is very diversified, and um, I have personally dated guys, um, white guys, blonde hair, green eyes, whatever, and um, but when I, um, you know. And they were they were very good. They were um, some of them were, were saved, some some oh. weren't. <laughs> <laughs> I dated a half Asian guy also. I dated Spanish guys from my country, and by Spanish I mean like I know I'm Spanish, but I mean like the right. white the white yeah, like like, like J Lo. 
Yes. And yeah. uh, we, so some of them we like friends. We, we, yeah, like J-Lo type. Yeah, they look like that. <laughs> um, so I don't, and, and I grew up in, in the, um, I went to a bilingual school. And most of the people that went to this bilingual school was was like it was like a mix, and uh, the majority then were white though because at that time only the white people can really afford the school. So we had a very very limited group of black people going to the school. So there was no other choice. There was, yeah. there was like either the tall, dark, and handsome one that he probably already had a white girlfriend. So we had to turn to like <laughs> the white guys. <laughs> yeah. was, hey. <laughs> Hey, it is what it is. Question. Like, demand. Demand. That's what that is. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> it was like, this is like, you like me, I like you, and that was it. It was just, yeah, like, exactly. I'm still yeah. friends with some of them. But anyway, I did date um, also guys that from, from a different country. I, I dated a guy from Nicaragua. I dated, you know, of course, my ex husband from Panama. So, yeah, I, I look at it this way. Like the song says, red, yellow, black, and white, they're all precious in God's side, they're precious in mine too. So with yeah. that, I don't have a problem. <laughs> with that, I don't have a problem. Age, <laughs> I will prefer, this is my preference, that he be as close to my age as possible, down and up. I remember my uncle said to me um, at one time, um, when he was alive and he had came to Honduras to visit and he was like on a mission trip to preach and all of that stuff. And he said to me, you're going to marry, marry somebody younger than you. And I was like, heck no, it's not going to happen. I said, I am not even going to entertain it. And lo and behold, years later and after he was dead, I ended up marrying somebody yeah, younger than me, you know. How much younger is Angel? Was uh, um he was like five years younger. Oh, okay. it, uh, was it five years? Yeah, something like that. Five. Now, why years. were you opposed to marrying someone younger? Um, because I I I feel right like that. You know, we all know um women mature more rapidly than than guys. Some women. Most women. And most women. <laughs> yes, it's true. And guys are very um, immature when it comes to certain things. And, yeah. uh, you know, and I just felt like, you know, I wanted somebody who had that maturity in them. Mm -hmm. And if I couldn't see that, then I won't consider. I, I Well, I thought the, guy, the older guys were more mature. Now, lo and behold, you know, life has a way of teaching you. Mm -hmm. So I've learned that you can find all the guys that are very, very immature. And I have like, also met young guys that are very, very <laughs> mature mm -hmm. in their actions, in their, they know what they want in life. They got that navigation system like in check. They know where they're going. They know yes. what they want to like achieve. So because I have lived now, uh, I, my mentality has changed when it comes to that. So I don't right. mind, and especially because I was married before to somebody younger, I personally don't mind being married to somebody younger as long as they know their role as a husband, as a caregiver, as a provider, yada, 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 et cetera. Right. Yeah. Anyway, um, other one, culture. Um, we have so many cultures within our own family, and we have learned to enjoy each other's um cooking and stuff like that and interact with each other so culture to me like i said red yellow black and white they're all precious in my side because i love food so i will eat indian <laughs> i love indian food i, I love, love italian indian food, food. Oh i love gosh. spanish food i love jamaican food i love um <laughs> what's it did i say italian oh chinese well, mexican Mm -hmm. Mexican, any type of food that uh, mm -hmm. there's certain certain things in each culture that I love to eat. Not everything, but there's certain things in each culture that I love to eat. You can make me eat this so, candy. I'm talking about food. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, that also would not be a problem because I'm a person that I love to cook. So I love to learn new ways and how to yeah. do something. 
I've never had chitlins. I don't know if I would try it. Um, I, I'm not sure about that, but I'm saying, but I'm willing to. Chris, you know anything about that, Chris? Maybe you know anything about chitlins? Maybe take a spoonful of chitlins. About chitlins? No. No, like, like I said, I'm never. I'm not familiar with that. that. I went to New Orleans and I was able to eat, have um, alligator bites. And they were yeah. delicious. Are you serious? Okay. Yeah, Did it taste delicious. like chicken? Because, I mean, I can't get it. It's like fried fish. Well, I got to be like chicken. I like chicken. It I tastes like fried every fish? Every meat tastes like chicken. No, it tastes like fried fish. No, literally, it tastes Did like you have? Did you have frog legs, too? Because they... Um, not that... I've eaten frog, frog legs before. You had no frog, frog legs? legs? No frog legs. No, no snake. No worms. Um, no Octopus. anything that's raw. Uh, anything that's bleeding, I'm not. I'm not even trying it. I'm not. Yeah, blood sausage. But I'm just doing that. that. No. I yeah, like they, like they cook stuff, but they they make it like bleed, and you see all the blood like dripping yeah. on the stuff, and people get like, ah, yeah. I'm Wait like, can we go? Can we go back to the alligator bites for a second? Were they fried? <laughs> it was deep fried. They were deep fried, so like breaded and deep fried. Breaded and deep fried. And they had also, um, in New Orleans, they had, I, I taste the gumbo. Well, gumbo is good. That's yeah. like, well, that was shrimp. my first time though, when I went there. I oh, okay. No, one, yeah, that's going to be delicious. I, I, I liked it. And I also tasted. Did you have escargot? Um, Did you eat snails? Yeah. Did you have escargot? Yeah. I had, um, escargot. I had, um, what you, what Disgusting. they call that thing? The squids. And, um, because we had like a big oh. platter. Okay, like calamari? Huh? Calamari? Yeah. I love that. That I'll eat. fried one. Yeah, but that's Calamari's what I'm saying. Okay. It's, it's, so culture with me, it, it, it's it's a hundred. I, I'm good with it. Now, the other one, the distance, um, I remember when my sister was alive and um, most of the guys back home only had like a high school diploma. So they, most of them couldn't get like jobs and stuff like that. And some of them didn't even have a high school diploma. Oh God, we should put that as one so, of the things. Education is education. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened, no, sh- they had to go, most yeah, of them man, man. took jobs to work on the cruise ship. So there was a recruiter that will come to the country and you know, they will have to fix the yeah. papers. They will have to get their oh, passport, blah, 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 their medical and stuff like that. And they will have to pay these recruiters a certain amount of money and they will mm. guarantee them jobs on the cruise ship. Okay. So um, these guys will go on the cruise ship for like nine months. They will make pretty good money because they don't have to pay for anything. Mm-hmm. Everything is provided for them. So they will send all their money to whoever they married. So most of the girls will marry these guys. And I, I my sister ended up marrying a guy that went on a cruise ship. And mm-hmm. I said, negative. I don't know what he's doing on that cruise ship. All them women coming on in and out. I was like, Jelly, uh, mm. no. So anyway, like I said, I went to a wedding like three or four years ago to Mexico. And I met um, a girlfriend of mine, <clears throat> um, daughter, who was getting married. She's Italian. He's Indian. And we went to this wedding and it was so beautiful. And they met online and he was in India. He came, he came over to New York, met her family. She flew to India, met his family. They were communicated by, um, you know, by the internet. And when I tell you they still together today, they now they having, um, their second child. Wow. Um, And the wedding was beautiful. They did like the regular Catholic ceremony, you know, with the white dress and whatnot. And then they did the Indian stuff. And oh my God, she looked it so beautiful. And they had the, the priest they're doing all this, rah, 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 whatever. And um, I mean, I was scared, but <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I was like the blood of Jesus, whatever it is he's saying, that is not in alignment with what I believe. Anyway, I, I did um, enjoy it, and that kind of like opened up my view. So now I'm, I'm at a place where I'm open. If I feel like love has no barriers, love crosses borders, love um, cross, um, crosses um, culture, um, race, um, you know, I know that with marriage, 
marriage alone is it's hard work. And when you adding somebody into your marriage that is from a different race, it kind of puts an added pressure mm -hmm. on, you know, by being married to somebody that is not like black. I love my black man, mm -hmm. but I mean, I also mm -hmm. looked at a lot of our black men, especially mm -hmm. the ones that are educated. Most of them mm -hmm. are married to black women. I don't, I don't know what, what is it, but most of them don't look for a black woman to marry. It's very sad, you know, especially when you look at our athletes and um, football players and stuff, you know, most of them end up marrying somebody out of the, uh, um, the race. So I'm like, well, you know what? Whoever God puts in my life, you know, we, I, I feel like our love would have to be stronger than all the other adjectives. It will have to be stronger than the race. It will have to be stronger than the culture. It will have mm -hmm. to be stronger than, you know, than... Would it, than would it be age. stronger than the religion? It, um, that's one that I don't... Mm, uh -huh, yeah, 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 I yeah. don't know if we I... Always, we always pump the brakes yeah. right there. So, oh, so the yeah, one, you have to put but the I really there. don't think yet that I'm going to negotiate. And see, when, when Astrid, like, I'm listening to all of you guys talk about your mixed family, right? So clarification i have many different colors cultures in my family yeah my daughter my daughter my youngest daughter is not married to an african-american man mm -hmm. right so they don't think like i think that's okay. number one number two <laughs> when i hear you guys tell your stories about your german german father or grandfather or jamaican or hondurian or whatever it may be that was your exposures so right. we, to, we go back to Ashford, back to our topics on, um, you know, our prior topics about, you know, about growing. How did you grow, right? So yes. you grew up exposed to something different. Yeah. One grew up exposed to something different. Yeah. Twenty grew up to something exposed differently, and I grew up to be exposed to something very different. Things were very different back then, and to a certain degree, it's still the same way. Blacks and whites didn't intermingle for the most part. Mm -hmm. And it's still taboo from coast to coast. It's still taboo. It so when I was growing up, there, was a, there were a lot of barriers to, to even consider having a relationship with a, a, a white man or a, 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 a black man with a white woman. That was like, oh my God. Even to see Sidney Poitier kiss a white woman on television caused a frenzy when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. so, it's not that, it's not that um, I'm not open. So, so the words that we choose about how we're being descriptive about it is very important. It's not that I'm not open. It's just that I have a choice. Yes. I'm open, but what my preference and my choice is, everybody's entitled to the same thing. It doesn't matter what your background is. Dawn says she sat at the foot of her, I think her grandfather, her grandmother. Grandma, no, Mother Brown. But, uh, Mother Brown. Yes. So when I talk to my ancestors, when I talk to my father, sisters, my great grandmother, the stories that I heard was that my family was loaned out to pick fields. Mm -hmm. They were loaned out to do other things. You know what I'm saying? So when I look at the history of my family, it, it may be very different from what your, your general makeup of your family might have been. My experience is very different than your experience. So not, it doesn't uh, block me, but um, it's just how I feel about my people my culture. It's what I want. It's what I'm pretty sure I'm not the only person that feel or think like that. I would never cut it off. I'm not biased. It's not about being prejudiced. It's just about what you feel like is, is, is good for you. What, what you feel like is beneficial to you. Right. If, you're, yeah. if you're okay with X, Y, and Z, that's fine. My daughter was perfectly fine with it. I love my son-in-law. He's an amazing young man. An um, excellent father, excellent provider, and all that good stuff. That's what matters. But that's, that's what exactly matters. What so, really matters. Who knows? Race doesn't matter. What if, matters is that they, you know. But she had to meet that person, interact with that person, fall yeah. in love with that person. I didn't find that person. That didn't happen for me. I'm not saying that I'm not open to it per se, but it's not a preference for me. Who knows? Like Dawn was saying, you don't want to cut off what you think that that if God places somebody in your life, who knows what could happen from that. I'm not closed off to it, but I, I want you to understand that a lot of people 
feel like, and, and, this, and we should even understand that from just other cultures, the Muslim culture, the daughters, what happens with them? They must marry within their culture. The sons must marry within their culture. Jews marry within their culture. It is like, it is for some people that that is just the way it is for some people, some races. So, uh, and they don't have really like, they don't have a lot of choice. When you make that right. decision, yes, you ostracize. You can't Indians, even make a decision outside Indians of- Indians do that too. They, they're very, very gun ho on marrying within their, their race and their culture. Mm -hmm. but, but the Indians, um, the Indian people, like from, um, you know, Pakistan or whatever. Punjab, I have Indian whatever. friends. But, but lately the newer generation has broken that yes, barrier I, I, and, and that's they true. have married outside of their race and now their families mm -hmm. are, are basically like breaking stuff. Like Tony, I don't know if you know, our great, great grandmother was, was Polish and she was white with blue eyes and blonde hair. And our great, great, great grandfather was an African slave and they, they got married. And then from there came whatever, you know. And like I said, my 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 family is a blended family. We are mutt. We we have like so many mixtures within us. Everybody is now. That exactly. Like I said, um, to me, your love gotta be strong when it comes to like, you know, crossing borders and 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 um the love has to be strong. Just like I said, for distance. I know a lot of people be like, oh, I want, I, I want, I want somebody here. Yeah, I want somebody here. But like, look in the Bible, <laughs> you know, how many times the guys in the Bible had to travel? Jacob traveled and that's where he found Rachel. I mean, um, Abraham sent somebody to, um, to a different land to find Rebecca for Isaac. So I'm I'm they using all came together. A they didn't stay in the different land. As a biblical example, sometimes your husband might not or your wife might not be in your hometown, in your city, or in your neighborhood. Sometimes God may have somebody for you that when you travel, you're gonna meet that person. So you have to just be open to whatever. We mm. all it's ideal to find somebody right here in the city, right here in my neighborhood or right here in my surroundings where I can, I would love that. But if it doesn't happen that way and, and I travel one day and I meet somebody or somebody travels and come and they, we, we meet and they want to have a relationship, we just have to make sure that we iron out the details of how well, we will make this do. thing work. What? And what now you to me, in a situation like that, are you willing to? But that's what I was getting ready to say before you, that's kidding. <laughs> that's what I was getting ready to say. Now in this age and time that we're living, we have um, social media that had made it so much easier where you can actually see the person. It's not the same thing as, as hugging them or holding their hands and stuff. But now you have that visual that at least you can see the person's face. Where before in time past, you couldn't see the person, you know, you just sat there on the phone and whisper and, mm, and breathe. But I can tell you but, from experience, having dated my boyfriend at the time, well, my ex-boyfriend now, obviously, but I think we were together for a little over two years. And we had, we literally videoed every single day and it still was not su sufficient. Like No, but I'm saying, but I, I, I'm saying like, you had to, um, to me, you have to be committed. You gotta, you gotta want it. You gotta be, um, you know, give that part of the love a chance. And and if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. You understand? I I, I just, just feel that, that that I know that the the guy will travel almost every other weekend. And I mean, it, it depends on a lot of things. If he has the finances, well, he gotta have the money to what do if, that. What if what, what if he's Indian? What if he's what? Indian and he and he's from the Hindu religion? What if he's Hispanic and he's into Santa Maria? I'm just throwing stuff Salteria, out there. Salteria, I, Salteria. As I said before, ah, that's the I'm only just... thing that I would not compromise. And that is we have to have so, serving the same God. I would definitely not be considering, and hopefully God don't, because God is very funny sometimes. The very thing you say you're not doing, he just have a way to like, you know. <laughs> 
like like say, oh yeah, I have to throw it out there. To try your love. Anyway, um, well, I was, the only reason I would prefer somebody that we have the same religion is because I'm very um, gun ho when it comes to ministry. I love mm -hmm. everything around ministry. I love, um, you know, preaching the word of God, teaching the word of God. I love seeing people, you know, I, I love yeah. talking about Jesus. I love, I, I, that's the, those are the things that I love. And because that's like 100% of me, I need somebody that we can be able to relate in that manner. Mm -hmm. So I can, I can probably um, maybe entertain being with somebody that's, that's Hindu and maybe present to him Jesus. But if he doesn't want Jesus, then I don't think, I don't see where it's going to work because I'm not going to be in my room like, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. And here he like, I'm like, I can't I'm like trying to like cast out some demons. And I just stop it. You want stop that it. extra? I just stop it. <laughs> oh, why are you oh, saying I'm No, I but can't. I'm just saying, no, because they, they do and they sit and they like, like, oh, but did not did I not say and they be did thinking. I not say from the beginning I that can't. religion and race oh, it can be a, a big barrier religion. Tristan, well, Tristan, why are you starting this mess? You know that the religion is not a part of this cotton picking conversation. We already it's know. religion, it's race, it's location, and it is age. Well, listen, no, we, the only thing I added in was education because we already know how we all feel about the religion thing. We some people may some people may be willing to marry from different different religions. No, not of me. course some people may be, but the people on this podcast are not. But it's not just us. Not it's me. a whole audience no, no, that no. needs watching. No, I understand that. But what I'm saying is we know that people from people from other religions, we had a we had this episode a couple of weeks ago and, and this is what I was saying at the beginning that Dawn and Asher were going back and forth about it because Ashley was talking about how she went to the wedding and she it was so beautiful and, and there was the two cultures that came together. And Dawn was saying, well, they wasn't really that serious about their two religions because they would never come together so easily if they, you know. And so they were very divided in that. So we know, we had this conversation. So we know yeah. that there are going to be people of different religions. I know a lot of right. Jews and Christians that come together. I, I see it a lot. I do. Mm -hmm. So we know that that, that that happens. But we didn't bring it up for this particular episode. But I wanted to input education because i think that sometimes that is something that can affect relationships especially if the mm -hmm. woman has a higher education than the man and she makes more money and then sometimes that becomes an issue because or she vice versa the man more. can be making more money yeah but traditionally yeah. that's pretty much acceptable because no, but some exactly. men will, some men will definitely not want somebody that's not as intellectual as they are or we're not talking about intellect we're not talking about intellect we're talking about a woman that makes intellect less education money than yeah, okay, okay that. yeah but intellect so and education is not no, Even intellect and education is two. Is two. Intellect and education is separate things. Two different things. I have two different things because I mean you don't have to be you don't have to be um, Edu educated. educated. You don't have to be human resources. Exactly. You don't have to be yes. You don't have to be educated in order to be intelligent or knowledgeable. Right. That's no, right. that's two different things. Yes. But you do. Exactly. But I know people personally. Yes, you have to have a certain level of education, whether it's bachelor's degree, master's degree, or doctorate. Yeah, and not only, and not only, and listen to this, and not only that you have to have a degree, but it has to be from a particular school. Yeah. It has to be from the Yale mm -hmm. of the world or the Harvards of the world or, you know, or the Columbia University of well, the world. Well, that's just all all status. And that's a person. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. But but from a realistic standpoint, a regular average everyday Joe Blow and Mary Schmary, like, you know, for me, I, I've, almost always dated men who made less money than I did. And I have to say it was uncomfortable. For me, it was uncomfortable. What was the uncomfortability about it? It was so uncomfortable because I felt like I was like taking care of this person instead of us combining our resources and building together. I felt like I I felt like I had to just always come up off of my own money. And then me being the type of woman that I am, being kind of, you know, girly and soft and pink and, 
and looking for chivalry and you opening my door and you paying for the meal like and you driving the car like i'm you know if i'm driving the car and if i'm paying for the meal and if i'm it's, it's like come on like what are we doing here like why 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 am i with you now like why are we together I'm, everything that i'm doing i'm i can do this for myself so why are you here <laughs> you're not providing me any time so what if you find somebody that that has um that is like really um financially um you know stable and he looks down on you that way like you know well you're not making enough money like me and i have to do everything because you don't have it really, i'm not the woman for him that's exactly <laughs> what i'm saying that's that's the me, the but me, i'm not me, going as far as to say i'm not no. going as what i the reason why i'm saying it's uncomfortable is because i'm a little bit old-fashioned when it comes to the roles of men and women in a relationship yes just it i'm just i just realized that i am old fashioned old fashioned like that i do believe that a man should pay for the date i do believe like i just believe that that men and women have roles and it's not and i understand that now because in 2020 and in this generation like of course like i i have my own job i drive my own car like so it's like i have a certain level of independence but i feel like that doesn't take my femininity away from me because i can for myself you yeah. when you still are dating me you're still dating a woman you're not dating my wallet you're not dating my degree you're not dating my job Say that. A woman, that, so that you still like need that. to date me and yes. so i just feel like you still gotta come with what you need to come with and you don't have to be the harvest of the year of the, of the worlds and things like that but and you don't even necessarily have to have a um an, a high like education but you definitely need to be financially stable or financially independent now if i make more money than you and i guess i should probably backtrack on that because i don't necessarily feel uncomfortable like if i make seventy five thousand, you make fifty thousand. i'm not going to necessarily feel uncomfortable in that regard because fifty thousand is a respectable salary right and so you can do something with fifty thousand, right but if you're making nineteen thousand or ten thousand, and you're living in new york and you <laughs> like you 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 can't no. nothing. Um, you, it's like the, your money ain't going anywhere. You buying M and M's and Snickers bars and ramen noodles to live. No, but I'm saying if he's somebody who knows how to handle his money, if he's somebody who mm -hmm. knows how to save, if he's somebody who knows um he, he his all his bills are paid on time, and um he has a very good credit score, and he knows his responsibility as a man. There's some man that even though they make less than you. They mm -hmm. will be like, you know what? I, yeah. I, I'm the man of the house and I'm going to make sure that the bills are covered. Yes. I'm going to make sure you're the man that I want. <laughs> exactly. I'll make That's sure that your needs are met and whatever you want to help with, you can, yes. but you don't have to. Exactly. You know, like I said, there's some exactly. men that really know what it is, um, their responsibility when it comes to being in a relationship. Now there's the other side, flip side, that uh, they want to like take advantage of you, right. making more money than them. And they will right. be like, you know, play stupid. Like, oh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I can't pay that bill. And oh, uh, can oh, you- Oh, uh, I left can my you wallet. Do <laughs> can you, do that? you know, then that is somebody who's being controlling and manipulative and, and somebody who is not in love with you, but in right. love with, with, with what yeah, you yeah. can do just, for yeah. them. So exactly. there's, a, there's a big difference. That's what I'm saying. If he knows, like I said, I don't mind marrying somebody that's younger or, you know, I, even like younger guys. I will go to like a certain age, but um, you have to know your role if, if you're going to be in a relationship with me. And you have to, like I said, you got to have your, like I told Dawn and Dawn can tell you that I said this. I said, whoever comes into my life, he better know where he's going. And have that nav navigation system in check. He right. has to know his role. He has to know where he where we going. You know, okay, what what are we gonna do? Because I'm a I'm a type of person that I would I would back my man up. I would mm -hmm. do whatever. Like unfortunately, yeah. in my marriage, you know, I don't want to talk about that part, but it was very difficult for me. Mm -hmm. It was mm -hmm. very difficult because I felt like I carried a lot of the load myself when it came to finances and and decisions and stuff like that i want a man that that knows how to make decisions that that knows okay you know we're gonna plan this we're gonna do this we're gonna go on vacation we're gonna right. you know, we 
you you have to have the same things in common. So to me, race, age, culture, and distance shouldn't matter because what really matters to me is you having a head on your shoulder and you knowing what you want and where you want to go. We're going to build together. We don't have a house. Okay, we're going to buy a house. We don't have this. Okay, let's invest in um, maybe in, um, you know, real estate. You know, let's buy a property here or, and let's build something so we can have some kind of generate some kind of income for both of us. I want somebody who has a brain that can think, you right. know, that, that, that wants to do things, that wants to go places. I don't want uh, uh, a person who don't ever want to go on vacation, don't want to like, bored. you know, yeah, boring. Those, yeah. very boring. Like, don't, mm -hmm. nah, why are we going to the movies? We can watch a movie here in the house. <laughs> like, it's the same thing. Someone looks like, like an adventurous and Exactly. Yeah. Like I mm -hmm. love to travel. So yeah. he has to he has to be on the same page with me. And those are the things. That's why with with when it comes to age, race, culture, distance, to me, that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. If you're in it to mm -hmm. win it, let's do it. Let's get together. I will travel and go visit you. You can travel and come visit me. And I feel like that's exciting because I love to travel anyway. So I will love going with to the person. You know, and meeting his city, his family. I would love for him to come and meet, you know, my family and stuff like that. And it don't have to be like every Saturday. You understand? As long as he's committed to the relationship. And like you said, um, Tony, that we can talk on, me on social media, like on, even on a daily basis and stuff. Like, you know, I work. If he works, then it's like, you know, we have to compromise. Because um, relationships are about, are about compromising, you know, about building together about establishing because at, at the end of it all if he lives in Tumbaktu, you live here um you know in charcoal city then you know at, at the end if you plan if it get, gets to that place where you got to get married a decision has to be made where a you decision has to be made and where you're gonna the, live so if the, you want to go to his city or if you want to yeah. come so how you gonna go to his city if you haven't met you know, travel there. No, yeah. And, and you might like it. You might like the city when you go and see it. You might say, oh my God, I, you know, I like this. I like the food. I like the ambience. I like stuff. And, and the same thing. He might say, you know what? I want to come to your city and live. So right. you got to leave love. You just got to leave the, the way, the highway open. A highway open. Wide open. You one of, the, one of my favorite things to. when it comes to long distance relationships is long distance relationships they're challenging when there is a plan okay. to end the distance okay yes. so i believe that they can work but there should be a plan to end the distance because being apart for such a yes. long period of time and such a long distance is just not even healthy for any type and of you got to be loyal you got to be committed in it too because <laughs> just because you're in a different city and you know she's in a, say you in new york and he's in um i'm trying to find somewhere like california <laughs> Yeah, that, that's really far. Like he's in California, you in New York. You know, if you really love that person, you have to be loyal. You have to be committed to that person, when, even when they're not there. Like I always say, like how can you say you love somebody, but every time you go to a different city, you leave in traces of yourself, and then you're coming back to your wife. Like oh boy. Yeah. You know, or you're coming back to your girlfriend. If you're gonna be in a long distance relationship. You got to let the woman in your city know, listen, I got yeah. somebody <laughs> and, I, I, and I'm committed yeah. to that person. And Thank it comes you. with maturity. It, it does. comes with integrity. Mm -hmm. It comes with loyalty. It comes mm -hmm. with honesty. Mm -hmm. You know, if you are, uh, if, if he's a man that's honest or if she's a woman that's honest, they will not be fooling around with somebody else. You know, oh, well, he's not coming today. What if he decides to like do a surprise drive by? And you like hooked up my favorite drive bys. Johnny go lately, you know. So it's a challenge, but it can be done. Yeah. So I'm not even knocking that down. I'm just saying, if it happens, it happens. I would, I would actually love to try it out and see what happens. Try out a long distance relationship. I would love to try it out and just see, just to see the thrill of it. Because, like I said, I love to travel, so that would, that would be my excuse. That's I, great. I, I have three day weekends every every week. I don't even want to. I don't even want to ask. I want to ask because our, way. <laughs> our time <laughs> has come to an end. But okay, Tony, I mean, you have a bell. I literally have. A bell. <laughs> like we could go on and. On. <laughs>
<laughs> oh, that's right. I forgot you're an educator. You're a teacher. Yeah, just always ding, ding, ding. But um, this is, it, it really, it, there's so many things that I'm thinking about is, as you're share as all of us are sharing, is, is so many different ways we could branch off from this conversation. But, you know, this, this is the holiday time. Um, we are talking about relationships. Um, all of us on here, we said last week, we're all single women. You know, we don't have men in our lives right now. We know there are people out there. They say that this is the time of year where the most suicides are um, committed, unfortunately, yes. sadly true. Um, so this is a time when people feel a lot of loneliness. So we want uh, our our listeners, people listening tonight, people listening down the road to understand. Depression. Understand that we empathize with you on that. We're praying for you. We want you to know that you're not alone. You may feel alone, but you are not alone. You know, reach out to someone. You always have a friend. You always have somebody that you can reach out to, that you can talk to. And if you are a Christian, you can talk to God. If you're not a Christian, you can talk to God. It doesn't matter. You could talk to, you could just sit and talk with yourself and just enjoy your own company, which I tend to love to do now that I'm getting older. I'm just loving to spend time with myself. Yeah. I wanted to say that because I know that this is a time where a time of year where a lot of people really feel the weight of not even, you know, this is your first Christmas without grandma. Maybe it's your first Christmas. People lost people from COVID. So there's a lot of things going on and people are just feeling it. So just know that we're here and you can always type to us online. You know, if you go to the, to the, to the podcast on YouTube, you can leave in the comments, pray for me. We'll pray for you, you know, things of that nature. So that's it. It is, it is our time. That is our time. That is our time. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> Just when it was getting good, right, Astrid? Yes. <laughs> you are enough. You are excellent. You are empowered. And you are love. Yes, you are. And we wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a happy New Year. Wait, 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 wait. Right? There you go. 